So what I'm going to do is walk you through a real quick exercise of what it looks like to create an email-based course. And uh, this is very, very easy to do. What I've done is logged into MailChimp, and here's my account. And where you want to go is to the autoresponder tab. That's really where all the magic happens. And what you'll see here is this is the uh, multiple part series, right? Um, this is week one, week two, week three. Then I throw in a bonus, and then week four and week five. And, uh, and what you'll see is, if you read it, you'll see this one sends one day after sign up. And this is eight days, and this is 15 days. And uh, this is the bonus at 20, and this is at 22 and 29. Now, if you're, if you're doing the math, right, it's really easy because because it's every week, what happens is it's just like your normal 7, 14, 21, 28, except it's added by one. So in this case, it's one day after sign up, followed by a week later. So that's 1, 8, 15, 22, and 29. Those are the those are the core weeks that it goes out, and you'll be able to see, um, you know, just over fifty percent for some of these, and uh, in the bonus one, obviously a, a higher rate, which was interesting to me. Except that it turns out most of the people who are signing up thought they were really going to get more and more into habits. So that's that's another bit of learning. Um, but what you'll notice is that there's still some people in the course. For example, this has ninety nine sends, this has only ninety seven. And this has 94. So there are still some people moving through the first stages of this. Um, but obviously, uh, let's see, 90 people have, uh, have come through the program, right? And, uh, and so with that, you'll see that it's still all these are in the mode of sending. Um, and I've named them PM or Personal Mastery so that I know their groups. So if I created another course, I would want to name it differently because it puts all of the uh, all of them in the same spot unless you start creating folders and of course logically you could do that if you had multiple courses so how do you how does this work right well let's go create every one of these weeks you create on your own separately and the only thing that's holding them together is the fact that you've logically thought through that these are all going to happen one after another so let's go create let's imagine we were going to do a week six we're going to go create an autoresponder the first thing it's going to ask me is which of the lists do I want this to go to? And I'm going to define this as the personal mastery, which is the name of the course, right? You can also, you can do more complicated things like uh, every time someone signs up for a list, you can have additional data configured so that you can segment them and then you can only send it to a part of the segment. I'm not doing any of that. So in this case, uh, I'm just picking the list. And then I hit next to go to the autoresponder. Now, you'll remember that in this case, what I've been doing is week after week after week and uh, what you're gonna see is there are different triggers different events right that you can trigger this whole email to go off my favorite one is a subscribe date right because that's literally like from everyone has a date when they subscribe and everything else should really be relative to the date that they subscribe but you could do something different you could do it when the moment something is opened or the moment a link is clicked uh, any of those things could happen um, and, you know, any bit of data that gets changed, you could trigger another response. In this case, and the most common case, is subscribe date. Um, and the import time, when a person got brought into the system, is how you're going to define the subscribe date. So that's totally fine. Um, you're going to see this, uh, you know, who will get this next. It's going to pop up in a window, but unless you actually move forward and come back, it's, it's not going to have config it's not going to have recognized all this data therefore it won't necessarily give you a full list um, at least that's what I noticed so I wouldn't worry so much about who's gonna get this the real trick is to then fill out what's on the right side so you can pick by uh, you know within the hour immediately you can do days weeks months years I do days and I specifically chose to say if you subscribe today you're gonna start your program tomorrow that let me do a couple things first of all most of my subscriptions come from the website and so I can decide, because I happen to be using uh, Gravity Forms, which is a plugin into WordPress, I can have Gravity Forms send an immediate email if I want that says, hey, thanks for subscribing, your class starts tomorrow, what have you. Um, it also means that I can decide what time I want this to send, get sent out altogether, right? Because if I, if I don't, then some people will get 
it immediately, assuming it was in the evening, and others, or in the, you know, if they would subscribed in the morning and they might get an afternoon one, if someone subscribed after that, they'd have to wait till the next day's afternoon. Got a little complicated for me. I wanted everyone to get it in the morning. So I started with one day after. Now, in this case, we are going further than that. So we want to do it on, say, day 36, if we're going to, you know, follow up our, our, our pattern. And, uh, and I'm going to do it at, I was doing it at 9 or 10 a.m., right? And everything in mine is Pacific time. So, uh, I can't, and I think it was actually nine. And I want it on every day of the week. So regardless of what day of the week it is, I want to be able to say 36 days after they've signed up, uh, I want them to receive this email. And so now we're going to go to the next step. When we do that, we get to name our campaign, right? Now, what's important to understand is naming is what's going to show up in the autoresponder tab. It's not ever going to go out the doors this way but the subject matter will happen here, right? So I might name this uh, Personal Mastery, and instead of week three, uh, we're at week five, six, right? Um, and, uh, and then over here, I might change it to something different, right? And so the subject is something I want them to open up. I want, them, I want to remind them it's part of a class, right? Um, so, you know, I might say, uh, personal mastery, and then name it something like um, right. And so then I show that it's part of a series. Uh, I give them a title, etc. Right, and I can decide who it's from and the email is that it's at. I can also personalize this with the uh, merge tag here that's F name, and I can copy that so that when I go to write uh, the actual article, I can I can use that at the beginning. Now you can track plain click, uh, plain text clicks. You can add Google Analytics. You can track all sorts of stuff. You can add Facebook comments. There's a whole bunch that you can do. I'm going to leave most of that off for now and hit next so we get to the design. And as we get to the design, you're going to see a lot of options. First of all, you can always pick one of the pre-designed templates. I don't do that, but you can, right? Instead, I go down to uh, drag and drop editor or my templates. If you select drag and drop editor, it'll show you there's a new one. And the new one is really, really fantastic. But the other thing that's going to happen is you can pick from basic templates or you can look at campaigns. And here what you're going to see is I was running another uh, campaign that's completely unrelated to that, which was the... Um, daily blogging piece, but down here you'll see I have other uh, pre-selected or pre-done ones, right? So week five was graduation, so I can say let's start with this guy. What that does is it takes all the work I've done already and pre-sets it up. But let's talk about all that work I did already because it wasn't a lot of work. One of the things I did was, you know, you can configure this text in the top corner here, and so you'll see that I clicked on the uh, pencil, it showed it to me over here, um, and, uh, and so I can say something like, what now? I can leave that alone, right? And I can leave that link alone. This is the graphic that I have, I have used um, for this series, but it doesn't have to be the only one I want. In fact, I can add anything, you know, literally any, any particular uh, graphic I want. So let's talk about getting rid of that, right? I'm going to delete that. And it says drop content block here. And all you're really going to do is you're going to drag this, and this is what's beautiful about the drag and drop process, you're going to drag this image here, and it's going to say, okay, do you want to upload an image? And so you're going to go browse. Now browse is going to show you all the images that you've already uploaded once before. It's going to take you over to Flickr or iStock Photo, you have, or you can hit upload and upload something from your own system. I'm going to look, I've, I've uploaded a whole bunch of different ones, but in this case, I'm going to go pick this guy again, just because you can see how easily it works. Save and close. And that gets me an image here. You can design any image you like. And then when you go to, when you go to write your content, just clicking on this item here is going to get you into this space. Notice that I've used if I hadn't, I could have pasted it because I'd already worked that through so that you get their first name here, right? 
And then this is typing like anything else. You have the ability to add links, you have the ability to add images, you have the ability to do everything like normal. Um, and so that's not really that hard. You're going to write your article and, uh, and, and you can imagine, you know, every, every bit of, you know, every one of your weeks is going to have an article. How long do you make your article? I, I guess it's about seven to eight, maybe 900 words. I wouldn't go too much longer than that, but I also wouldn't do three or 400, but that's just me. I'm going to hit save and close because this is a fake one that I don't plan to finish. But what you're going to notice is you have a preview and test right here. So you can go into preview mode or you can send yourself a test just to take a look and say, okay, is this looking the way I want it to look, right? Um, and that's helpful. And then once you've configured, tweaked, adjusted this all you want, you're going to go to plain text. If someone doesn't have the ability to see uh, HTML or anything else, now you have a plain text version. They will do it for you, right? MailChimp will automatically do it for you, so that's fantastic. But you can go in and edit stuff if you want. And then we're going to go to confirm. When we go to confirm, you're going to see everything else all over again. 36 days after sign up, 9 a.m. Pacific time. It's going to go to this list. Here's a subject. Replies are going to go here. You're, you're tracking what you're tracking. It's a one column template, etc., etc. right? You can preview and test or you can start the autoresponder. And the moment you say start the autoresponder, it's ready to go. When we come back to our dashboard, what you're gonna see is that now it's here in this list, right? All the way up to week six, and it's in sending mode. I don't want it to be in sending mode. So I'm gonna pause this, because I don't want anyone to get this fake one. But that's how you do it. And honestly, it really is, let's, Let's get out of here and go back to the basic. This should now show as not running. Yep, see it's paused versus the others are all sending. So I'll delete that later. But the other thing you'll note is once this one, and, and you can literally create one after that and one after that. So you don't have to stop it at uh, day 36, right? What you'll notice is then on your dashboard, you will have the ability to see how these, uh, how these are working, right? So you can see most of these are coming out of Chris on his post, um, but the day after this gets sent out, you'll see that that it's here. In fact, I think if I look at my uh, here top five opening rates, the of everything I've ever written and everything I've ever sent out, the personal mastery bonus number one habits has the uh, highest open rate, almost seventy percent, um, and that's a big deal. And you'll notice here's the other thing, right? Um, most of the articles I send out on a day-to-day -day basis get between a 30 and 40 percent open rate. Yet this email course, right, which is a targeted course for specific people who have asked to get it, and they know it's going to be a limited amount of time, right? That's the benefit. You don't want to send out a 45-week plan, but a five, a six, a seven-step or seven-week process um, is something people can really consume, and you'll notice the rates are all up higher. So I highly recommend email-based courses. Uh, you know, as, as we looked at the list in just two months, in case I didn't uh, mention that to you, um, we've had uh, 97 people uh, come through here, right? So that's uh, just a little over two months. Um, so that's been great, far more than I ever imagined. I thought it might only be five or ten folks. And with that, we'll wrap up.